arcing, sparking, and houses did burn down across America as a result of that improper technique. Hey, this is Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today we're talking about home runs, not baseball, electricity. The home run is the first conductor, the set of conductors that leaves the electrical panel to the first point of termination. That first wiring section from the main or sub distribution panel to the first point of termination or use, that's the home run right there. There are three considerations, three basic installation considerations that I want you to have your head wrapped around before we actually exhibit the wiring techniques of pulling home runs. The first one is heat. Heat is a consideration in every electrical installation. One of the notorious mistakes that's been made in American history in the past is excessive conductor bundling. The specific term is conductor bundling as it relates to heat in this circumstance. And what the installers have done, the electricians did in the past, is that they utilized a conduit to house the home runs to secure, protect, and support them in an attractive manner. And in doing that, what they didn't consider is that there's going to be an excessive heat buildup in that conduit. And that's exactly what happened. The jackets were melted off the wires, copper shorted to copper, arcing, sparking, and houses did burn down across America as a result of that improper technique. So as a basic rule, the thought processes and mathematical calculations are more advanced further down the road, but as a basic rule, do not bundle more than three home run cables together in a hole with a zip tie or any other kind of securement. The second is physical damage. Physical damage is a term that's found in the code, but it's not defined. What it means is this, protect your wire during installation, after installation, consideration needs to be made to protect the wire from physical damage. That's the outer jacket, the inner jacket. The wire needs to be kept in a condition that is compliant with its manufactured intended use. And abrasion is a violation of that. Being, uh, if it's a concealed conductor that's only intended for concealed use behind walls, but it's utilized in an exposed application, that could be a violation. Here's another for instance, an attic access, a pull down staircase and a walk up attic access. There are code requirements about the clearance of conductors from that attic access so that those conductors, those cables, are not stepped on, harmed, damaged, or braided in any way. Number three, I want you to be really mindful of securing and supporting your home runs. So first of all, when a home run is pulled, it should have some workable slack. It should not be as tight as a piano string. That's a poverty mindset to try to squeeze every inch out of that wire, right? I almost guarantee you two, three, four times over the course of the construction project alone, if all of your wiring is pulled tightly, there are going to be disruptions that come into play. The plumbers are gonna need to route a toilet line right where your wiring is, and you're gonna need just a little bit of play to sag that wire out of their way. HVAC is gonna come into conflict. You're gonna have framing alterations per the homeowner request. You're going to need slack. I'm not talking about big bundles of wire, and I'm not talking about messy, uncontrolled wiring, but don't make it as tight as a piano string. Leave yourself some play. Secondly, the wiring should be, by code, supported within every four and a half feet. That is both supported and secured. Where wiring is passing through a horizontal hole, it is considered to be secured and supported. Where it is passing across framing or parallel to framing, an additional fastener is required, and that would be a traditional staple. Future consideration for protection from physical damage would be considerations like wiring that's run on top of the framing on top of the floor joists of an attic, and then a homeowner comes at a later date and looks to expand their storage by putting plywood on top of that wiring, and guess what? That wiring is now being physically damaged. Or a friend of mine, he had a dishwasher, this is future, you know, after installation. He had a dishwasher where the wiring connector that protected and secured the wiring 
where it entered the wiring compartment of the dishwasher popped loose. And so the wire was no longer protected and it was in direct contact with the metal. Dishwashers vibrate houses as a whole, actually vibrate and things that are not secure or are resting on sharp or rough edges will work over time. So he walked into his kitchen one morning to the smell of an electrical fire and found that it was at that wiring compartment at the dishwasher. So all things being proper to protect from physical damage during installation and after installation. That wiring also is required to be terminated depending on the connector type within 8 to 12 inches of every place where it enters into an electrical box. So our home runs route back to a common location. Our electrical panel will be sitting in this vicinity. The reason the home runs come one bay to the right is because we've got a triple LVL obstruction immediately above the electrical panel, but we need to locate the panel itself in a place that complies with clear working space. So the panel will be located here. This is our panel all boxed up, ready to go. It's a 4080, that's a 40 space, 80 circuit electrical panel rated at 200 amps, which will adequately supply all of our home runs and power to the home. So these are the home runs for the house. We've got about uh, 15 here and we've got another 18 to pull, a total of 32 home runs. Each one of these home runs is meticulously labeled by Zach, our lead electrician and will be labeled on the other end as well and then mapped in a schedule so that he has total clarity about where every home run starts, which is at the panel, and where it terminates, which will be at various destinations, total of 33 throughout the house. So here's a home run wiring chase from the first floor to the attic of the second floor. And you can see these cable management system provides a little bit of free, day, free air between all of the cables and we're supported every 16 inches and secured approximately at this point to keep the wire within the wall. Now that you understand the terminology of home run and three basic requirements for running your home runs, in the next video we're going to get into running wire inside of the home and basic mechanics.